so this person did not have ankylosing spondylitis or dish or anything but one of the other disorders that makes your spine stiff and changes it biomechanically so it's one big lever arm is end stage spondylosis degenerative change even though this didn't look that bad this is all that we could think of that caused this person's um kind of under the end plate type of fracture um this one so this is a complex one and we won't go through too much because it's probably too complex but you can see there's a fracture under the end plate like we've seen on the others that top part of the spine slid backwards and compressed the cord so it was they, they went forward and they went back so it was a hyperflexion so the the top of the spine went forward into the canal in the back you see there's a big gap between the spinous processes so we know there's disruption of the posterior ligamentous complex as well the anterior ligamentous complex you know, there's a fracture there but we don't know how disrupted that was it's at least a b if not i would say even a, an a type injury there probably is a little bit of subluxation hard to tell on mri in the next one i told you that on the t1s they should be bright the body should be bright unless there's edema or tumor in them those are dark so we know that's an acute injury. Mm -hmm. We can also see there's bright stuff in front of the spinal cord. On a T1, as you, as Nader Dalla told you, there shouldn't, the, spine, the CSF should not be bright, it's dark. So if there's bright stuff, that's blood. So they have hemorrhage and that can expand and compress the cord in addition to the fracture, in addition to the, the moving of the spine because it's unstable because it's broken with both ligaments and bones. And then in that last picture, you can just see, you know, the, the edema in the bodies, you can see edema under the anterior longitudinal ligament disruption of the posterior longitudinal ligament, all the lines, black lines, ligaments black all the time, have to be continuous. And then what was done with this person was an anterior fixation only, and I'll let Rizuli talk about whether that was appropriate or not. I kind of didn't think it was, but I'm not the surgeon, so. Yeah, so, you know, the problem with this type of a fracture and this type of a spine is that, again, these hyperextension type injuries um, tend to be very unstable and they tend to require a anterior and posterior type of um, fixation. Now, you probably uh, could get away with a, um, a uh, anterior only procedure here, because I, I don't know if this involved, uh, did, did it, it looks like it involved the uh, posterior ligaments complex, right, here? For sure, so on the CT, yeah. you can see the splaying of the spinous process. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 sorry, yeah. I forgot. I didn't, so definitely yeah, anterior so, okay. yeah, yeah. probably ligamentum yeah, flavor yeah. on the third picture. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. absolutely. It's a level exactly higher right. than the fracture. So, it's, it's exactly, hard. exactly. So th this this is one that I I personally would treat with the front back. So I would or 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 a posterior only procedure. Uh, you you need to address this. This is very. This is shows. Uh, you have obvious intercom injury and you have obvious posterior com injury. Three sixty. It requires either a front back or in this case you you could probably be fine with a posterior only procedure, but um, an anterior only procedure. You're not addressing. The um, instability in the back here. So this patient could, and it's also a level above where this fracture was. So uh, you could you could uh, set this patient up for something bad happening. Um, additionally, uh, as you can see with all these osteophytes, there's basically so minimal disc here, and it's uh, it's all fused, and it's there's very it's very hard to get a good sense of the anatomy in this case. And we can end up doing is taking off too much of the vertebral bodies above and below. So you end up doing partial corpectomies at this level and this level, which was likely done here. And then the graft you put in here could easily subside and then cause more problems for this patient. Um, and they're going to require, they develop a cervical kypho uh, kyphosis and chin on chest deformity. And then you have like just disaster bill. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.